Welcome back to Top 10 Scary Urban Legends, and if you're new, be sure to give that a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you never miss a video. From the infamous fan of the opera story to stories of man-eating beasts, here are the top 10 scary French urban legends that you don't want to know. I'm your host Andrew, and let's get right into this. At our number 10 spot, we have the Phantom of the Opera. The Phantom of the Opera is a well-known legend that is closely linked to the history of the Opera Garnier in Paris. This legend originated from a fire that occurred in the Sao Palatier, the predecessor of the Opera Garnier, in 1873. A pianist named Ernest was horribly disfigured in the fire and lost his companion as a result. Overcome with grief, he chose to isolate himself from the world and even took refuge in the basement of this place, which was still under construction at the time. Ernest spent the remainder of his life in the shadows of this building and only ate fish from the underground lake of the opera. His sorrowful cries could be heard in the background of performances, as many guests would report. After his disappearance, strange events started to occur in the Opera Garnier. For example, a machinist was found hanged, but when they did investigation, there was no rope to be found. And also, a chandelier fell during one performance, killing a spectator seated in the seat number 13. All these mysterious occurrences were attributed to the fan of the opera, who is believed to still haunt the halls of the famous theater. These mysteries have captured the imaginations of many writers, including Gaston Leroux. He wrote the novel The Phantom of the Opera in 1910, which was a worldwide success and largely based on this legend. Even today, the legend continues to live on as Lodge Number no. 5 in Opera Garnier is permanently rented by a mysterious stranger. This lodge is strategically located within the theater, allowing its occupant to see the performances but remain unseen. At our number 9 spot, we have the Beast of Gévaudan. The Beast of Gévaudan remains one of the most intriguing and mysterious legends in French history. The terror caused by this man-eating beast or beast lasted for three years from 1764 all the way to 1767. The attacks took place in the Margeride Mountains of South Central France and spanned over an area of 90 by 80 kilometers. Eyewitnesses reported that the beasts were formidable with sharp teeth and an immense tail. The descriptions of the animal also varied widely, with some saying it was a striped hyena, while others claimed it was like a large wolf, dog, or even a wolf-dog hybrid. Regardless of its actual appearance, the beast of Gévaudan was known for its brutal methods of attack, which often involved tearing out the throats of his victims. The Kingdom of France took threat to this beast very seriously and even devoted a significant amount of manpower and wealth to hunting this animal down. The resources of several nobles, soldiers, and royal huntsmen, and even civilians were used in the pursuit of this beast. But despite their efforts, the attacks persisted and the number of victims continued to rise. The exact number of victims is not known, but estimates suggest that the beast killed and injured hundreds of people. Although the beast was reported killed several times, the attacks did not stop until 1767. To this day, the identity of the beast of Gévaudan remains a mystery and its legends continue to captivate people's imaginations and if there was really a man-eating beast in France during this time. At a number 8 spot, we have the father of cinematography. Louis Le Prince is a name that should ring a bell to all those into cinema, as he is widely regarded as the true father of cinematography. However, despite his monumental contribution to the world of motion pictures, his name is often overshadowed by figures like Thomas Edison and the Lumiere brothers. The reason for this is that Le Prince disappeared before he could showcase his groundbreaking invention to the world. In 1888, Le Prince shot the first film in history in Leeds, England. However, instead of rushing to show the world what he created, he chose to be patient and refine his invention. After two years of careful tweaking, he was finally ready to present his work to the public. Then in September 1890, he boarded a train to Paris with all the materials and patents he needed for the showcase. But unfortunately, he never made it to the French capital. His friends were waiting in Paris to pick him up, but they found no trace of him. This mystery sparked many rumors and theories about what could have happened to Le Prince. Some people said that his brother Albert killed him over their inheritance, while others believed that he drowned himself or just decided to fled to start a new life. But the most tantalizing theory was that Thomas Edison himself was behind Le Prince's disappearance, as he wanted to ensure his monopoly over the invention of cinema. Despite the many theories surrounding his disappearance, one thing is for certain, Louis Le Prince left a lasting impact on the world of motion pictures and will forever be known, at least for me, as a visionary inventor. All the way at our number 7 spot, we have the murdered monks. The Abbaye de Montemer is a 12th century monastery located in Normandy, France, and it is considered by many to be one of the most haunted places in the country as well. The story of Mortimer Abbey be begins with the Cistercian monks who built the monastery on marshy land that was referred to as the Dead Pond, a name that would eventually become the moniker for the abbey itself. 
Despite the monastery's size and grandeur, it was often plagued by financial difficulties, which ultimately led to its downfall. By the time of the French Revolution, the abbey was in a state of disrepair, but a small community of monks still lived within its walls. However, their presence was not enough to save them from the wrath of the revolutionaries, who decided to storm the abbey in 1790, killing four monks who lived there and leaving a scene of blood and chaos behind. Since then, the abbey has been the site of numerous ghostly sightings, with rumors of ghostly monks haunting the ruins. Fortunately, there has even been accounts of a benevolent ghost there, dressed in the robes of a monk, appearing during World War II and even saving an English paratrooper from an enemy attack. And if you decide to visit, there's a higher chance you'll probably encounter one of the more angered spirits of the four murdered monks, but let's just hope you encounter this one. Number 6, the Mont Saint Michel. The Mont Saint Michel, a settlement located on the border of Brittany and Normandy, is a place of both beauty and terror. This majestic fortress built on an island is surrounded by the sea, which makes it a popular tourist destination, but this fairy tale like location still has a dark and haunting side to it. According to the legend, the island was discovered when Saint Albert received a dream from Archangel Michael directing him to build a monastery there. Despite initially disregarding the vision, the archangel burned a hole in the bishop's head to reinforce the message, and the monastery was built. The island has been a place of worship and pilgrimage for centuries, and has been the subject of many myths and ghost stories over the years as well. The island is known for their Battle of Mont Saint Michel, one of the bloodiest days in French history. It is said that the wails of English soldiers who lost their lives during the war can still be heard on calm days with low tides. Many people believe that the souls of these soldiers are unable to rest and continue to haunt the island, never moving to the afterlife. Before the French Revolution, the island was inhabited by monks and other pious people, who decided to bury their dead in the walls of the church. When the revolution reached Mont Saint Michel, the monks were forced to abandon the island, and the abbey was then turned into a prison. Some say that the ghosts of the dead monks, who were disturbed by the desecration of their once sacred location, still roam the island as well. And the humper list, we have the Jack and Jill nursery rhyme. As you already know, nursery rhymes' origins aren't as charming as their true story. One of these is the Jack and Jill nursery rhyme. It has two popular interpretations. One is tied to the French Revolution, and the other one is tied to King Charles I of England. In the first interpretation, Jack represents King Louis XVI of France, and Jill represents Queen Mary Antoinette. The rhyme tells the story of their execution during the Reign of Terror in 1793. But in the second interpretation, the rhyme revolves around King Charles I's attempt to increase taxes on liquid measures. The standard volume of jack was reduced and the tax remained the same. A gill which was twice the volume of a jack was also reduced as a result. The volume mark on the standard jack measure was indicated with a crown and the reduction of the volume caused the crown mark to fall, leading to the lyrics, Jack fell down and broke his crown. Jack and Jill ran up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Number 4. The Worst Barber Ever Travel back in time to medieval Paris and the Ile de la Cite, when a barber was known to frequently receive foreign students who were housed by neighboring canons. Unfortunately, some of these young students would then vanish without a trace. In those days of widespread poverty and frequent attacks, it was believed that these students were victims of a violent crime, and with no family left in Paris to inquire about their disappearance, their fate was left to speculation. However, one day, an unusual incident changed the course of events. A dog was barking loudly in front of a barber's door for several days, and its master, a German student, had not returned from his appointment. The police were then called in to investigate and made a shocking discovery. The barber was cutting the throats of his young client, then disposing of their bodies through a trap door in the cellar of the pastry chef next door. It was said that the pastry chef used the bodies to make some of the best pies in all of Paris. The barber and pastry chef paid the price for their crimes, and they were burned alive in a public square. Their houses were razed to the ground, and today the former site of the bakery is used as a garage for the Paris police. Number 3, The Haunted Lighthouse at Tevenek Despite its picturesque location on the coast, the Tevenek Lighthouse was notorious for the tales of madness and death that surrounded the 23 lighthouse operators who lived and worked there before it was automated in 1910. The area around the lighthouse has a rich maritime history, and was known for their frequent shipwrecks that occurred there, including the crash of the French ship said who saw it during the Napoleonic Wars which led to the death of hundreds of sailors. According to local legends, the area is also haunted by the spirits of the Celtic seafarers and warriors, who has been said to haunt the lighthouse since its inception. The tales of madness that befell the lighthouse operators are particularly eerie. 
The first operator, Henry Guzenik, was reportedly driven to madness by ghostly voices that spoke to him in the Breton language and told him to leave the lighthouse every single day. One of these successors are said to have had a similar experiences, leading the French government to make Tevenek a two-man lighthouse and even recruited married couples to work there. However, few couples were willing to live and work at this lighthouse, for obvious reasons. And those that did suffered untimely and tragic deaths, including a family with three children and a cow. Well, it's not... It's not relevant, is it? The story surrounding the Tevenek Lighthouse is filled with the tales of failed exorcisms, crucifixes installed to ward off evil spirits, and even a violent storm that arrived just as one of the operators were giving birth inside of the lighthouse. So definitely one of the places in France that you don't want to visit. Number two, the encounter of Marius de Wilde. The French commune of Corobo made headlines in September 10, 1954, when a local railway worker named Marius de Wilde claimed to have been visited by extraterrestrials. According to the reports, de Wilde claimed According to the report, Dewad claimed that a cigar-shaped UFO landed near his garden and two small creatures in spacesuits resembling dive costumes emerged. The UFO shot a beam of light that paralyzed DeWild and by the time he was recovered, the aliens are already getting ready to leave. Despite an investigation by the authorities that found unusual marks on the railway tracks, there was no concrete evidence of an alien encounter. The stories of DeWild's experience with the extraterrestrials quickly was widespread and reached the wine-producing village of Chateau de Pop located hundreds of miles from Quarobo. The local mayor and town council were keen to protect their citizens and vineyards from potential alien invaders. And as a result, they passed a municipal decree that banned all UFOs from landing, taking off, or flying over the community. Which is definitely strange, but I guess the UFOs listened because ever since they made this decree, they haven't seen one since. Number one, the ghost of Pont Mary. The city of love is also the city of spine-chilling ghost stories, one of which stems from the era of France during World War II. This period saw the division of France into two parts, one directly occupied by the Germans and the other being a puppet state by them. However, amidst the hardship and turmoil, a brave woman rose to the occasion and joined the French resistance. This Parisian lady was married to a resistance fighter and was tasked with collecting information from an SS officer with whom she started an affair. One fateful winter night, she was scheduled to meet her husband on Pont Mary Bridge, which spans across the river scene, but he ended up never arriving. Understanding that something was amiss, the woman wept, waiting through the night until she eventually froze to death. Ever since, reports have surfaced of her ghost appearing on cold nights on this bridge, still crying and waiting for her husband to show up. These are the top 10 scary French urban legends. What do you guys think about this list? Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and leave some suggestions for some future videos that we might do. And if you enjoyed, be sure to click like and subscribe and hit that bell notification so you never miss a future video. I'm your host Andrew and I hope you guys have a scary day.